You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. You're now tuned in to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q, and we're coming in to recap it tonight. With stats, facts, and breakdown, we'll cover two games and preview another one. We're going to recap the Pelicans' 128-125 win over the Los Angeles Lakers in the Smoothie King Center. And also the terrible 23-point loss to the Houston Rockets, 114-91 and out in Houston. And also we'll, then we'll preview in the second segment the Portland matchup coming up on Tuesday night with stats, facts, breakdowns, interview from Coach L. Gentry, AD, and the rest of the boys. And as always, we'd like to give you a round of applause for joining us tonight on the Pelican Post Game Report and also joining us to recap tonight's, uh, well, the previous games is fan favorite DC and Pelican I view contributor. How you doing DC? Um, uh, not too good, man. I'm feeling bad for Pelican. trying to digest this game. Uh, this, this high garbage that we call the game. Yeah, it's pretty bad, man. And, um, we're going to get into that brother. Uh, just hold your steam. I know we, first we're going to get to the Lakers. I think start calling the smell smell again. Nah, I don't think so. But we just had to get certain things right with the Pelicans. I think we'll be fine. So let's get into the rundown brought to you by the, po- the good folks at theposhlifestyle.com. That's www.theposhlifestyle, uh, life spell with a Y, L-Y-F-E style.com. For all of they have hundreds of dozens of goods for sales, every th- for sale, everything from water filters to personal products such as deodorant, shampoo, soaps. All natural with no chemicals in them. Also, they're adding new products every other week or day, almost daily. But, you know, check them out. Hundreds of dozens of products available at the Posh Lifestyle, not just the website, but a lifestyle. And uh, on the rundown today, we're going to talk about some interesting facts and stats. Uh, we're going to talk about the Pels tight win over the Lakers, uh, 128 to 125, as they were able to turn on a juice. They won. They win four in a row up to this point. And they, they seem to be rolling for the Pelicans despite their defensive lapis, laps. They were still able to run with a young Laker club and able to win that contest. Also, we'll get into and talk about the topic dealing with that L.A. game is the defense. Can the Pelicans right the ship? They're winning these games, but they're not playing the best defense the teams can af- that they can afford to play. They, they Of course, they sweep the, the Lakers three games or nothing but the Lakers are really a bad team. So even though they've been pulling it together as of late, but the Pelicans defensive woes are starting to show up here. Even though they win in these games, you can see a lot of defensive laps by this team. We'll get into that. Also, we'll talk about Rajon Rondo in this game, how Rajon Rondo uh, exploded and had a terrific game, even though Anthony Davis was the top dog uh, scoring wise. He scored 33 points in this game, but Rajon Rondo and Drew Holiday had really good games. Rondo, uh, 24 points and 10 assists and Drew Holiday with 26. We'll get into that. How Rondo is really solidifying helping the, the Pelicans win. Now, after we finish doing that, we'll cover the Houston game. Of course, we just said they got blown out by the Rockets 23 to nothing. A game in which we can repetitively see an L Gentry smiling and, and uh, at the press conference uh, using excuses like we were tired tonight. We'll get into all of that. Uh, cause I'm, I'm ready to really willing to get into that one. And, uh, you know, and we'll talk about what the hell is he happy about? What the hell is he smiling about? You just got your, 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 your team's ass hand to your 23 points. You know, what's the deal here? You know, you're not out of the woods yet. I mean, this team is still in the thrust of a battle. They're one or two games decided between the two teams that's behind them. And guess what? The two teams behind you did kick your butt. So you're not exactly safe here. There's no time to get uh, comfortable. Anyway, you know, we'll talk about that. And then we'll preview on the second segment toward the back end, the Portland matchup Tuesday, another major game. 
By no stretch of imagination, we came out of this tough five game road stretch four and one. That's commendable. But you're not done yet. We still have a very uh, to close out this month alone, the losing to Houston. Then you come against Portland. And then a really, you know, a Portland game against Portland. That's a few games ahead of them, two games ahead of them. They need that win. And then LeBron James, you got to match up with the best player, arguably, in the NBA. But anyway, that's our topics. Not that many of them, so we can have a lot of diverse talk. We also have some interviews, like I said, we're going to play before. So let's get it right on into it. D.C., starting with the Lakers game, the Pelicans 128 to 125 win over those uh, uh, Los Angeles Lakers. I'm not going to say they're a sorry team like Sacramento, but they've actually been playing pretty well over the last couple of weeks or so. They're 31-40, and 40, and they were actually trying to chase and be respectable and play for a, p- a position. The, it was a very exciting game back and forth. Eventually, the Pelicans were able to lock them down in the third quarter, only allowing them to score 17 points. After they exploded for 44 in the first quarter, they stopped them to 17, and the Pelicans put up 31 uh, in that quarter to ultimately take the game by three. What's your, what's your take on watching that game? What you think about it? I mean, uh, ultimately, I thought it was a, a good game. It was a very entertaining game uh, for anybody watching. But, you know, you got to be a little disappointed with the lack of defense, but also encouraged by the offense and uh, how they were able to take charge and win the game down the stretch. And uh, I was very impressed with Rajon Rondo, man, seeing him turn that time clock back to about 2010 and uh, do his thing, man. He looked every bit of the Boston Rondo that we all remember. Absolutely. Uh, He did look good in that game. Uh, Like I said, he scored 24 points, 10 assists in the game, had a couple of rebounds. Drew Holiday played really well too, D.C., 26 points, 6 assists in the game. He looked good in 32 minutes, 12 of 16, shooting very efficient. And, of course, Andy Davis, 33 points, nine rebounds, had two blocks, a couple, three steals in this affair uh, against a very exciting game indeed. Off the bench, not so much. Ian Clark continued to ascend. He had 13 points on 5 of 10 shooting in the game. Now, let's listen to what Coach L. Gentry has to say about the win Coach, over congratulations. the Los Angeles Your team Lakers. Overcame a lot tonight, didn't they? Uh, yeah, we did. You know, that, that's the worst team to play. <laughs> that's the worst team to play uh, on the on the. On the third game, uh, five, uh, you know, the fifth game in, in six days, uh, you know, because they the pace that, that they play with is just so unbelievable, and and they're relentless uh, in their pace. So, uh, I did say to the guys that the first team that decided to to guard a little bit would probably be the team that had won. And I thought in the fourth quarter we really locked in, did a good job, came up with stops, and uh, that's how we won the game. Isn't it amazing that it took all the way to the fourth quarter of the third and final game of the back-to-back-to-back to, to get the win? I mean, uh, that team is, is they're really, really good offensively. And you can see they got so many shooters out on the floor. And, uh, you know, they got good big guys on the inside. So uh, it's really tough. They don't allow you to double team uh, because they can find three-point shooters. And uh, if you do double team, then those big guys are pretty doggone good. You know, Jules Randall and uh, Lopez, they do a really good job of taking their time in there. But, you know, we did a good job of getting the ball in the, in the paint and the drives. You know, Rondo, you know, I thought was absolutely great. Uh, you know, we ended up with 80 points. Coach Elvin Gentry, his thoughts here. Uh, dealing with the game, the Pelicans in this matchup against the Lakers shot 55% on the, from the field, 43% the Lakers shot from downtown, the Pelicans 25% shooting 6 of 24 from three-point uh, territory. Not good at all. They only turned the ball over 10 times. They, speaking of the Pelicans, they were 18 of 22 from the free throw line for 82%. Not bad. They were out-rebound by the the Lakers just by three points. They out they had a high assist total, 28 versus 19. And, of course, they, out, they, did, they had eight more fast break points than the Lakers, which was encouraging, and they destroyed this team in the paint, 80 to 48 in the contest. Uh, before we play Anthony Davis, uh, DC, you want to talk about uh, what L. Gentry is speaking about dealing with the, uh, the 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 young Laker squad's shooting ability. DC, are you still with us? Okay, we have any issues right there with DC. Uh, let's let's do this. The game featured 22 lead changes and 11 ties. New Orleans, who entered the game, ranked second in NBA in points. And the paint behind the Lakers with 51.6 scored a season high 80 points in the paint. 
Now, Los Angeles scored 48, so we just explained that both teams scored a high volume of fast break points in the up and down affair. New Orleans outscored the Lakers 30 to 22 in that category, with the Lakers leading 92 to 90 with five minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third. Los Angeles closed the time frame on a 6 to 7, 16 to 17, 16 to 7 run to take a 108 to 97 lead in the final frame. New Orleans answered at the top of the fourth, opening the final quarter, scoring nine unanswered to cut the Laker lead to two points with 10 minutes remaining with the Lakers holding a 125 to 121 lead with three minutes and 31 seconds remaining in regulation. New Orleans then closed the game scoring seven unanswered to seal the victory. The Lakers going on four for the remainder of the game from the field. Now Rondo scored five of those 12 fourth quarter points during that stretch and finished with 24 on the night, despite being outshot uh, on the night by New Orleans, the Lakers did win the battle from deep as the Lakers was 17 of 39 for 43% from the three-point range. Contavious Caldwell pulled uh, KCP connected on 8 of 11 uh, from downtown. He was spectacular, 72, almost 73%, including uh, his first five. Although it was their third game and three nights, New Orleans committed a season-low eight turnovers in this matchup to go on to win. And they close out the Lakers three games to, no, uh, to nothing in the season series as well. Here's Andy Davis with his thoughts on it. Hey, what, what does Wayne say about this team to come back like that? Um, mentally tough. Mentally tough. Um, just had to grind it out. It was one of the games where you, know, you got to grind it out a team who was making a lot of shots, playing very well. Um, it's five and six. So it's one of them games where we just tried to fight through the fatigue. Uh, physically and mentally, and just try to pull this one out. How hard was that to do? That it was hard. I mean, you, you know, I was feeling it for sure. But I just wanted to keep pushing, and then, uh, you know, once we got the lead, um, it was just all about just trying to maintain it. And then I think when the crowd got into it as well, that kind of gave us a little extra boost, and um, <clears throat> was able to make some plays defensively and uh, going down the other end of the score. What do you think has been with this team this year? Where y'all been able to close so many games out of the fourth quarter? Um, our execution is a lot better. Uh, you know, we know what we're looking for. Um, and then even Rondo just having the ball in his hands. He, he's a guy who can uh, read the floor very well. He made great decisions with the ball. So. Um, by him being in the Sandy Davis, man, giving big shots out to Rajon Rondo, man, in this game, having a terrific game, guiding the team, helping the team out. And, uh, and Rondo's a big deal. AD gives him praise right there. Uh, DC, uh, we had a little communication issues earlier, then we worked it out. What's your thoughts on Rajon Rondo? I know you said some stuff earlier about Rondo. I know you heard the interview just now about Andy Davis. Uh, coming in talking about Rajon Rondo in a second before the break we'll play a little bit of Drew Holiday what his thinking was but what you think about this game with the Lakers of course the Lakers can shoot those trees they you know they space out the floor but what's your perception on this win over the Lakers as they close out the Pelicans sweep them out on the season series three to nothing I mean uh like you were saying uh, about Rondo I, I think he's a lot bigger part of this team than People give him credit for it. People look at him like he's old and he can't get it done. But what we don't realize, uh, well, we know, but what a lot of people don't realize who don't watch the the Pelicans, I guess, on the game-to-game basis is Rondo sets up a lot of guys, man. He makes life easier for AD, makes life easier for Drew Holiday. And as you can see um, with the game, that the next game that follows when he didn't play, how the team looked. But aside from Rondo, AD is the engine that makes this – Team go, and uh, he had an amazing game himself. Very efficient, played uh, out of his mind, bro, and basically led them down the stretch to make sure they got this win. And um, I think I think they did everything they needed to do to be able to win this game. Man, uh, they were hungrier. They just wanted it more than basically uh, the other team out there. Aside from the defensive issues, I really didn't see uh, a lot to gripe about. Um, in the Lakers game, bad rotations, but everything else on the offensive side of the ball was on par as usual with Rondo, Drew Holiday, and AD out there. All right, speak good, good analysis. Speaking of, of Drew Holiday, here's uh, Drew Holiday with his thoughts uh, on the game. It feels good, but uh, we can celebrate tonight. We got a still a tough schedule to go. Um, pretty sure we moved up, but we got what nine games left. We got to keep on winning games and, and get to where we want to get so that we can have some, some advantage in the playoffs. What do you think uh, really turned around in that fourth quarter? 
I think we just locked in defensively. Uh, we knew they was gonna come out and take a take a lot of shots, take a lot of wild shots, uh, and make some wild shots, and and, and and make some good shots. But uh, just got on a run and, and down the stretch, I think we really locked in defensively. Where did the legs come from? I didn't play against that, so I was pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was, I was alright. Uh, I felt better than yesterday, but but then, man, again, just taking care of your body, uh, being being professionals. Um, staying here later, waking up and, and, and going into the facility and getting stuff done. Um, we just take care of each other. That's Drew Holiday, man, talking about the game. Uh, when we come back on the other side of the brick, we'll have to cover the Houston Rockets game. The preview for the uh, Pelicans and the Trailblazers and other news as well. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, we are the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We coming back. We just got through recapping the the Pelicans 125. I mean, excuse me, 128 one to 125 win over the Los Angeles Lakers. At this point, the Pelicans riding high, four four game winning streak uh, that they were able to amass. Four and one on the five game home stand. Very commendable. Big ups to the Pelicans on that. Of course. We we're gonna fair we're gonna wave goodbye to that game, and now we're gonna cover the current game that they just played with the Houston Rockets. Now this game was totally different than uh, the game before. Now they lose to the Houston Rockets, one fourteen to ninety one. Horrible game, terrible game. Now of course this game they were missing Rajon Rondo due to a wrist injury, and Nikolai Mirotic with a hip flexor. So both of those guys were set down for this game. Very important game against Houston. Of course, the Pelicans were short two of their core pieces. So you, we, I, I guess a lot of people wasn't expecting too much to happen in this matchup. Obviously, El Gentry wasn't. Uh, he modified his starting lineup to, uh, I guess, I don't know why would you modify it. Me and DC had this, uh, this uh, conversation off air about him modifying that starting lineup, taking Omeka Okafor out of the damn lineup 
and then matching uh, Davis up with Capella. I just I don't understand it, man. Don't get it. Why the hell would you go small when they are small? You didn't need to. You could have kept Okafor in there. And he played Okafor eight minutes this game and put him in during trash time. There's, there was nothing wrong with Okafor. I looked at the injury reports. And I, for whatever reason, L. Gentry continues to mess. I, I just don't understand it. Why would you Why would you do that? Why would you take him out? Because you could have placed him on Capella and allowed Anthony Davis to match up with a smallish, ineffective P.J. Tucker trying to guard him. That would allow A.D. to put up the 40-something points you know they would need to, to score to win this game. So, D.C., before I get and sink my teeth into this bull, I want you to tell me what's your thoughts because you watched this. You watch. You watched this game. I know you wanted to turn it off a half a dozen times with a lot of dedicated Pelican fans out there. What's your thinking on this game, man? Well, I, I agree with you about the lineup, but I kind of disagree. I could understand why he wouldn't want to start a Mecca Okafor because the last game, uh, Clint Capella was dunked on him. He was blocking all his shots. He pretty much embarrassed him. Uh, the last game wasn't a good matchup for Mecca Okafor. But what I don't understand is why he would start Darius Miller over Sheik Diallo. I mean, Sheik Diallo could have easily guarded PG Tuck, PJ Tucker and uh, pro- probably could have gave you a lot of spark because um, they clearly didn't have it to come out with. Once I saw the lineup, I was like, what the hell? I knew uh, Rondo was hurt and Meritage was hurt, but I wasn't expecting to see Darius Miller out there. I can understand Liggins and Etwan Moore is already a starter, but I would have liked to see Mac Okafor or Sheik Diallo out there as well. Um, it just was a horrible game all the way around the board, man. I really can't think of anything that we did right, per se, and uh, it's definitely one you want to forget and move on from, and hopefully Rondo and Meritage will be ready when we play the Blazers on Tuesday. Let's lay this, some, some uh, team stats out before I let – uh, Elvin Gentry give his shitload of excuses to why they lost this game by 23 points. The Pelicans, of course, shot 40%, 39.6 to be precise, then shot 28.6, 29% to be precise from the three-point line. They had 16 turnovers in this game, but not the rest of the show. Houston had 22. You know, the Pelicans... Were beat, they beat them in the paint by four. They, they had more fast break points than the Rockets, 14-6. to six. But after that, it's, it's, it's nothing else to even speak of, you know. They, the Pelicans did have more offensive rebounds. It, you know, it didn't really matter. And then the, the cold part about it is the referees stopped Houston from getting to the line. They only gave them eight attempts at the free throw line, you know. But the Pelicans only got 12, so nine out of 12. And uh, Rockets on eight. But they, then they didn't need it. And then you said, well, what the hell they happened? Three-point shots it, uh, is what happened. Fair, wasn't that the game that Alvin Gentry complained about? Yes. <laughs> the last time? That's correct. He blew his gasket. So, this know. is the funny part. Yeah. They lose by 23. He said, well, how the hell did that happen? Well, let's look at the statistics. And in this case, it shows you that the, the Houston Rockets hit 18 of 47 three-pointers for 38%. So they hit 18 three-pointers. How, how many did the Pelicans hit, might you ask? Well, the Pelicans shot 21 free uh, three-pointers and only converted six of them for a 27%, 29% versus 38% by Houston. 18 three-pointers by Houston versus six. So you do your math right there. And it's tell you absolutely crazy. But anyway, let's listen to what Coach Eldon Gentry, who's in good spirits after getting his ass kicked by 23 points. In good spirits. Let's listen to what Coach Gentry has to say. Maybe he, uh, uh, some alcohol. Uh, maybe, perhaps. I don't know what's going on. You got your ass kicked yeah. by twenty three, Coach. You need this game. Yeah, you don't have that many opportunities to lose. Hey, it's a, fa- anyway, it's a family show. I'm gonna need you to stop talking. About well, here he goes. Um, I don't want to use that as an excuse. You know, I do think we were a little tired, uh, and we got off to a rough start. And you know, this is not a team you want to get off to a rough start with. Uh, I was proud of the fact that we came out in the third quarter because I was just going to say, hey, we won't play the guys. And they said, no, 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 we want to play. You know, we got to at least, you know, do something, you know, uh, to show. And I thought we did a great job. We were good defensively in the third, uh, held them to 19. But we never really got into any kind of offensive rhythm. 
uh, where we could put together, you know, a stretch of, of points, uh, uh, a stretch of shots, and you know, you, you, you know, they're a very, very good team. So you have to be able to keep the pressure on offensively, and we just weren't able to do that. Coach, do you, do you dwell on anything tonight moving forward, or do you just kind of flush this and go home to see Portland on Tuesday? No, I, I don't think there's anything that we can do about it. I think if there was anything, I tried to find the positive, and I think the positive was is that, you know, after we came uh, in at the half and we, and we had played, you know, uh, poorly, uh, the guys said, no, 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 we want to play, and they went out. And I thought we did a good job. Like I said, we did a uh, you hold that team to 19 and a quarter. You've done a good job, but you have to be able to have a run of points, and we just never really got there tonight. Anything you do uh, the next two days to help them get ready for Portland, whether it be rest? Yeah, or rest. Practice, we rest. rest. Yeah, we really rest. I mean, that's a tough stretch, you know. Now that it's over, I thought the guys handled it great, but you know, to play five games in six days and to play, you know, six games in eight days. Uh, I've been in the league a long time, you know, 30 years to be exact. I don't remember ever playing, you know, six games in eight days. And then three in a row where, you know, it's just, it's, it's asking a lot of your team. And I thought our guys did a, a, a great job of stepping up, finding a way to, to compete at that level. And then the very last game, we're playing a team that's the number one uh, in the NBA in pace and what they do and how they attack. And, uh, and, and we were still, able to find a way to win that game. So uh, I think that's what we have to look at. Obviously, you know, we got a whole lot of work that we still have to do, uh, but uh, we still control our own destiny, and I think that's the most important thing. You give the guys tomorrow off and then practice? Yeah, we will. We will. We'll give them tomorrow off and give them a chance to just rest. You know, it's just been a heck of a stretch for them. And, you know, for a guy like A.D. and Drew that plays, you know, so many minutes, uh, it's, just, it's just needed. Coach, did in any way the schedule finally catch, catch up with your guys tonight? Uh, That's Coach L. Gentry. It was, it was six games in five days. Six games, five days. Coach L. Gentry, the first thing the reporter did ask Coach Gentry. He said, uh, Coach. Well, no, it can't be six games, five days. That's been two games in one so, <laughs> so Coach L. Gentry says, I don't want to use that as an excuse, uh, games, but we were tired. Days, that's what it was. <laughs> so, I mean, you heard what Coach L. Gentry said. You seen how he was uh, in the game. He knew this game was out of uh, uh, was, was a game that they wasn't going to win. You didn't have Ni- Nikolai Meritage, Rondo, and then pretty much. Then you, then you, then you go and upset the lineup even further when you don't have to by not starting your starting center, who's been there. In a, in a winning capacity, when they when he starts, they win most of those matchups because he takes the pressure. Uh, he 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 takes the pressure of AD think, having uh, to guard the Oka big center. Could possibly have a little be a little banged up. I mean, he is thirty four years old. No, I looked at the reports. There's nothing saying that, that Okafor has any injuries of any I mean, sort. Like it might not be nothing where you 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 no reported, minute restrictions. But I'm just, saying, just maybe he hurt. Him. Maybe maybe uh for the time catching up with him a little bit. Uh, the excitement and the adrenaline of being back in the league, maybe starting to wear off. Do you think? Could well, be a possibility. I mean, anything could be and a possibility. Played, uh, DC, back but, to back. but my my thing is this: you don't play the man for fifteen minutes a goddamn night anyway. So if he that bad, well, he can't play fifteen minutes a night. I I, I mean, he don't need to be on your team because he's only playing fifteen to sixteen minutes a night. One game he played twenty something minutes. Emeka Okafor is not. He's not playing a, a lot of minutes. But my, my point is when I seen this, I just didn't like how El Gentry was smiling during this game. Your team's getting their ass kicked by 23 points. When you, the, the, you, you know, you were smiling during the press conference, all this foolishness. I don't want to see you, you if you if, if I'm a basketball, I'm a basketball fan and I'm a Pelican fan. And when my if, if you could you could smile when it was a hard fought game, this game was absolutely a toilet bowl game. This was trash. There's nothing that you can learn from this game. It was garbage. It was stupid. It was weird. It was a lot of these fans out there would say, I shouldn't. I wasted two or three hours of my time, two hours of my time watching this crap. You know, I could have I could have went to sleep but did something beneficial with those two hours at a time just to watch the I, I Pelicans get trashed 23 it was times. It was that boring. <laughs> Terrible, man. Terrible. <laughs> Shooting them out the gym and then Gentry – Dumb, dumb founds me by not moving Okafor in and then plays Okafor when the game is totally out of reach for eight minutes on the back end of the game when it was totally out of reach. That made no sense to me. Do not upset the, your lineup even further when you don't have to. You don't have to play small ball against Houston. Keep your steady rotation in there. 
Keep Okafor in there. You could have put him on Capella. Let him beat Capella up. Let him stay on Capella. Then you allow Anthony Davis to play against P.J. Tucker, which he could have scored some extra points to possibly keep it in there. I ain't going to just keep talking about the stupid roster decisions by El Gentry with a scared Darius Miller. Let's talk about that, D.C., because you made mention of that, and I, and I agree with you. Darius Miller at times looks good, then as many times he just looks scary. It's like you're a six foot seven small forward. You penetrate, and I've we've watched where he'll take up. He'll have a wide open three point. A guy runs at him. He's five steps from catching up to him. He will pump fake. The guy catches up to him. He'll step inside of the three, uh, inside of the three point line. Take a deep three. I just don't understand. You know, he does this Tim Frazier thing. He gets to the post and then kicks it out to the three point line. You right there, stupid. Just dunk the damn ball. You're six foot seven. You agree with me on that? I agree with you on a uh, on a lot of it. Uh, I see him do it, man, and it's it's dumbfounding to me at times. Uh, he'll have his opponent in the air, and he has a clean path to the basket, or he gets open, and uh, the help hasn't arrived, and he has a eight foot, ten foot shot, time to time, wide open, and it's almost like he's tentative to take it. He doesn't want to take that. It's almost like he's told himself at times, only at times, that he can only hit three point shots. And it seems to when his three point shot isn't falling, he lacks total confidence, and he's a little unsure of himself. I, I really don't understand it because I think Darius Miller is probably um, one of the most surprising players this year for people who weren't aware of his skill set. And I actually talked him up, you know. Uh, you did, and I just I don't get it, man, because you can make these shots. You know, but he, I don't want to harp on him too, too much because he ain't the reason we lost this game. Um, I'm going to put this one on the team just expecting to lose. That's what it sounds like because it sounds like the head coach already pretty much expected him to lose. And he's yeah, with saying those, all kind of stuff. All those damn excuses he's giving. We're making excuses about us being tired, which I understand. They played six games in eight days. Uh, five of those games came in six days. And I, I do understand them being tired, but to me, um, if you want to change the atmosphere to being a winning team, that's not what winning teams do. What Greg Popovich uh, said. I look at the Spurs or a team, a winning organization yes. like that, and a winning coach like Greg Popovich. What if said would that? Cross examine Al Gentry's interview with what Greg Popovich may have done. Oh, uh, I mean, he can't be Greg Popovich, but just an example of a winning coach, and it just sounds off to me, man. I, I don't think it's a lot that you should be happy about, but uh, I guess he's leaning on the fact that this was the last game of a pretty tumultuous uh, stretch of games for them, and he's happy that they showed effort at least for uh, one quarter in the game, which was the third quarter. I didn't find it very uh, rewarding, but, hey, from Al Gentry's perspective, I guess it is. It, it, and that's why L. Gentry, as a head coach, doesn't have any hardware. I mean, he has one as an assistant coach under another man calling the shots. But when it comes down to it, that explains to you why. Because I've been – he'll say it again. He said but it you, in the interview. You, you I've know, been 30 you know years in here. I've never been another a part of a stretch. Thing I 30 add, years. I'm sorry to cut you off. I just got to say this. Now, I got a quote from uh, D'Antoni. He said he told his team that they made history in beating us and got to the uh, 59th victory, which is the most victories ever. Would they say in nothing? The, in the Houston franchise. He said they didn't care. But El Gentry and was made and, and when, when we got on the other side, our coach congratulated our team for having a good third <laughs> quarter. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. See, it's, it's just it's it's, it's insane, it's, man. It's hilarious. That's to me, insane. And the team I'm talking about, they they got. They got 59 wins, and that's the type of mentality they have. They don't even care that they broke the franchise record. It's routine in them, and they did what they were supposed to do. See, that's that, time to move on. That's 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 my point right there. And when people say, "Well, they caught up in the now of the moment," and I understand that because now is all that counts. But when you look at the now of the moment, we going forward. Those little things like that show me why L. Gentry shouldn't be the head coach of this team. It shows me because he lacks the discipline that's needed to push this team to the next level or two or three. This team is a very good team. If they can crunch down and prevent teams from scoring three to five points a game on defense, 
they could win. They can go exceptionally far. L Gentry is not a disciplined head coach. And it shows on defensive lapses. We've been following this team all season long, and they're still doing the same dumb breakdowns, the same stupid switch over into bad matchups. When they're switching, you got a guy crosses another guy. He's going to take the mismatch and put himself in a mismatch with a center or another player. You don't, it's not, it's not a smart matchup. You don't switch yourself out into a mismatch to favor the other team. That's coaching. It's also the fact that you can't allow teams to score 10 points, five to 10 points more they average because you can't stop them from having wide, 10, at least 10 wide open three point shots a goddamn game. You can't do this is at the end of the season and they've been doing the same thing all season, which means they're going to take this into the playoffs if they are fortunate enough to make the playoffs. That is because only the best teams will make the playoffs. If they're fortunate to make the playoffs, then you can't take this stupid defense into the playoffs or you're going to be out in the first round. You can't do it that that these the little stickers, the little stickers that hit me and say, Man, see, I told you, L. Gentry, he's he not the right man for this team. Don't fall in love with all these points they scoring because that won't mean nothing at the end of the day if you can't play Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because uh, when I watch the game, I can see situations where the points we score actually gives us lapses on defense. Um, some of these long rebounds, um, some of the bad shot selections actually puts the Pelicans in – a situation where their switches are terrible because you have a guy trying to hurry up and get down court that's lacking on the back end from an unexpected shot or just being out of sync or even on a, a few bad possessions, bad turnovers and things like that. So a lot of these type of things put them out of rhythm. When it works good, it, it works extremely well. But when it's bad, it's atrocious, man. And you could see that tonight. Um, but a lot of it had to do with uh, also Rondo not being out. And guys just seem very uncomfortable, in my opinion, with, with him not on the floor. Or at least without him to set up the tempo of the game. Because right. well, when Rondo, the games that Rondo didn't start, we do good sometimes. But a lot of times we have very rocky starts until he comes out. And kind of get guys in the groove, give them the ball in their sweet spots, and everybody gets comfortable. Then the thing kind of takes off. But um, to talk about the defensive lapses, man, I, I really look at the way we run our offense sometimes, and it doesn't work r- well with every team. I think it should uh, right. they should adopt a versatile uh, offense to where maybe sometimes we should play big and slow it down. We do have one of the best big men in the league, right. and um, you can maybe say your offense up that way as opposed to trying to run all the time against everybody. The I think to, that would turn it that would in turn give you better defense too. The answer to everything with all of your your defensive lapses that's to play faster. Not not occurring that you play <laughs> you do faster, you make more mistakes. But that don't play into the the, the psychology of the the, the coaching staff for the New Orleans Pelicans. They should anyway, play fast against teams that can play fast, man. They can keep up. Man, listen, you they know? need to play defense at times because sometimes this defense, it really sucks. It sucks. Let's move into the, the, the preview of the Portland game. We're running out of time here. Got less than two minutes. Let's cover the Portland preview here as we are looking at the Portland. Now, of course, the, the good news is the fact that the Pelicans do lead the series with Portland two games to one. Uh, currently, they did beat them the last time, one nineteen to one thirteen. Portland's averaging one hundred and six points a game while giving up one hundred and three. They shoot forty five percent from the field, rebound at forty three a game, nineteen assists a game, five blocks a game, seven steals a game. They're eight and two in the last ten games, playing very strong basketball. Of course, the Pelicans averaging one hundred and twelve points a game, giving up one hundred and eleven, shooting forty eight percent from the field, forty four rebounds. 26 assists, six blocks, eight steals, and they're five and five of the last 10 games. 500 ball, the Pelicans are currently playing in the matchup. Now, if you take a look at uh, the last three games against uh, the Trailblazers, Drew Holiday averaged 18.7 points a game, about seven assists a game, almost two steals. And one game against Portland earlier this season, 
as a member of the Bulls, Nikolai Miritich scored 18 points, 10 rebounds in that game. In three games against New Orleans earlier season, Damian Lillard averaged 22 points a game, eight assists a game, four rebounds. McCullough averaged 21 points as well and shot 43% from downtown. Wow. Uh, in the game as well. So, uh, uh, Elvin Gentry is 13 and 24 against Portland. Terry Stotch is a perfect 18 18 against the Pelicans. In this matchup, DC quickly running out of time. Who is your winner and why? Uh, the Pelicans are going to get the victory here, man. Uh, Portland is a team that basically lives and dies off that three pointer, so there's a chance they could steal it. But I think the game is just too important. AD is going to go out there and give a monster effort and take the victory. All right, well, I'm agree with you, uh, DC. I'm, I, well, no, actually, I'm not. I'm going to get this game to Portland. I, I just think that the Portland Trail Blazers are playing better than the Pelicans. I know it's at home. I, I, I just, I, I, for the feel of it, man, it's, it's in my spirit. It's hard man. I think to lose got after getting your butt whipped. Uh, you got, that's you got true. Whipped that's true. But I just, I, I don't know. Something, they come off after that. I think Portland gets this game. I, I just think so. Okay. I think Portland's going to beat them on, the, beat them at the three point line and end up winning this game. But anyway, that'll do it for tonight's uh, broadcast. Appreciate you for joining us on the Pelican Post Game Report. As always, if you enjoy and like the show, please comment, share, and support our show by going to www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Make a donation from me and DC. We like to say thank you for joining us. Peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 
101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that weak sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.